Okay, guys, we are going to take that um, awesome creature that you created for your project, and we are going to glue them down today. So I want you to double check. I want you to find your pencil side. So notice that when I unfold it, it's kind of popping up, okay? It should be popping up and not down, okay? We're going to make sure that we glue down the non-pencil side so it looks as clean as possible, which means that we're going to put the glue on the pencil side. So again, glue on the pencil side. Now you have a choice. You can use white Elmer's glue or glue stick. Um, the My worry about glue stick is that sometimes when we apply glue stick, we can accidentally rip part of our paper. Okay, so it's up to you and what you have at home. I know you have glue stick, but if you have a white Elmer's glue, you might want to use that instead. So I'm going to show you how to use that because I'm confident that you can use the glue stick just fine without my help. Now, when we apply white Elmer's glue, we always want to use less than you think you do. And you want to not have giant blobs everywhere. And the other thing is that you want to keep your glue away from the edge of the paper because as soon as you smush it down, it's going to squeeze out, right? So we want to make sure we keep our glue away from the edge of the paper. So I'm going to make a oval. Oh, I got to make sure that my glue's unclogged. Shake it down. I'm going to make kind of like an oval or circle-like shape here, but notice how far away I am from the edges. And then maybe I'll add a couple dots closer just to make sure that those little points come down. And I'm going to put a little bit of a line right where the neck is. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a very skinny line just in the middle of all my arms and horns. I'm barely squeezing my glue bottle. Less is more. Same thing with my legs. Just a line. I'm going to add little dots on the edges of the shoes. And then I'm going to put an oval in the middle. But I want you to look carefully. My glue is nowhere near the edges, right? And even then, I still might have a little bit of an accident. Now, the hardest part, and this is where you might want to go get somebody else in your family to help you with, is flipping it over. So I'm going to carefully grab it by the top of the head. And I'm going to kind of turn it carefully again. And I'm going to hold the outsides. So I'm going for the outsides. And then I'm going to line it up as carefully as I can in the center of my black paper. So I've got black paper under here. I know it's hard to see. I'm sorry. Here, I'll make it a little easier for you guys to see. I'm going to put this other colors underneath. All right, so I've got my black paper, and I measured, and I placed it down, and I'm gently patting it. Gently patting it down. So again, I used my black background paper. If you would prefer to use a different color, that is totally up to you. Any sort of background will work just fine. I just like how the color pops off of the black. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our creature aside. Now, if he accidentally is hanging off an edge, see if you can slide him over just a little bit, okay? Um, if you got glue everywhere, here's the good part about Elmer's glue. It dries clear. Don't try to wipe it off. Just leave it and let it dry. It will look better than you accidentally like kind of smudging it and smearing it all over. So don't panic. If you've got a little bit of glue coming out, just leave it. You're gonna put it off to the side and let it dry until tomorrow, okay? So I'm gonna put my creature off to the side. And then um, I did get, grab some scraps of color that I have in my house. If you have construction paper or colored paper at home, try to use that first before you use the good full sheets that are in your kit. Um, as much as possible. So if you've got some colored paper or even like post-it notes work just fine too that are different colors, grab whatever you've got available. And um, we're going to talk about making symmetrical details and kind of how we're going to design it. So I'm going to actually use my practice guy to kind of tell you what I'm talking about here. So anything we add to our symmetrical creature needs to stay symmetrical. So what you can do is you can take, so I'm going to take my um, this piece here, and I'm just going to cut a chunk off of it. We don't need a lot of paper for this at all. Okay, so I've got this red piece here, so I'm going to clear off my space and get everything else out of the way so you can see better. So I'm going to take this red piece here, and I'm going to fold it in half. And you could also practice with your sketchbook with white paper if you wanted to. So just like we did, I'm going to fold my paper in half so that whatever I make, I'm either making two of them 
or I'm making it symmetrical. So I'm gonna draw a half of a heart shape, okay? And I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna show you. I bet you've done this before to make a symmetrical heart, but maybe not. So I took half of that heart shape and I open it up and I have a sim perfectly symmetrical heart and I can put that anywhere on the middle, on that crease of my creature because I know it's symmetrical. If I put it over here, it's not symmetrical. If I put it here, it is. All right, so let's say I wanted to stick with that heart theme, but this time I want it to be, I want two of them. So I'm going to cut out two hearts, meaning I'm just taking the paper. It's already been folded, so once, ooh, that's kind of a, Mrs. Vance made some silly looking hearts, but that's okay. So I have two of these shapes that I just cut out, but I'm gonna flip one and now it's symmetrical. So if I put this here and here, whoop, fell off for a second, pick it up. So if I put that here and here, you can see that it's symmetrical, but it was important that I flipped that shape so that the these kind of ends are pointing inward at each other because if I do it like this, it's no longer symmetrical because they're not a mirror image of each other. So that's why they have to stay like this. So I want you to um, start thinking about designing pieces. And again, you can use a post-it note or something like that so I can rip off the sticky part and not use that. And I can kind of fold this in half, remember? And I can either draw a shape like a random shape and I can cut on the crease and if I do it that way it's got to go along the middle somewhere so maybe I put that on my head or I could cut out sunglasses and do that there and it needs to go on the middle if it's a single shape you're cutting out it needs to go on the middle aligned with the crease if you fold your paper and cut out two of one thing and then you open them up then you can put those where um, somewhere where they are a mirror image of each other so I could put them one here and I could, I'd have to put the other one across from it over there so do you get the idea that we are gonna get to add details Okay, with our extra pieces of paper in different colors to create details on top. We're not gluing anything on today. It's more about practice and designing and getting ideas, so feel free to use whatever scraps you've got laying around or things out of your sketchbook because then we will then tomorrow, once this is all dry, start to add them to here. All right, guys, have a good one.